How do you connect to a Windows web server in AWS? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. First and foremost, before we even attempt to connect, we should double check to make sure that RDP connections are allowed within the web server security group or the server security group for that matter. In my case, it's a web server. So I'm going to click on the server. I'm going to scroll down in its description and under security group, I'm going to click on the security group that is attached to it. Within the security group, I want to make sure that under the inbound tab, we have RDP connections being allowed. Now the source here is too general, but for this demonstration, it works. It simply means that I'm allowing absolutely everybody in the entire world, the ability to RDP into my server. It's highly recommended though, that you are a little more granular with your source address here. Maybe use the range of NAT addresses that you have for your corporation, or if you are messing around with this at home right now, you might want to set up the source as the public IP address of your router. But yes, I am allowing inbound RDP connections to this web server. So let's go back to our server. We are going to click on the server. And when you see connect up at the top, you'll see here that it gives you the DNS name you're going to need for the RDP connection. You have the username you need, but now you need the password. So how do you get the password? Well, when you created your web server, right at the very end, it asks you to provide a key pair. And if you didn't have one, you would create a key pair. So I, when I created this web server, created a key pair called demo key pair. And it says right here that you need the demo key pair PEM file, which is the private key of the public private key pair for demo key pair. I have it stored locally on my device. So I click browse. There it is right there. Demo key pair PEM file. I'm going to click on it. Then I click decrypt password and there is the password we need. So now I'm going to take all of this information and I'm just going to store it somewhere safe for myself right now. Basically a uh, notepad uh, and I'm going to close this and now we launch an RDP session. So this RDP session, I'll use the public DNS name. We could also use the public IP address of the server, which I can get right here. So I could use that address or I could use the DNS name. So I'm going to now copy and paste that name into remote desktop. I'm going to click connect. And if all of a sudden the connection didn't work, double check the security group. Maybe you missed something in the security group. But right now this is essentially saying that I have the ability to RDP in. If this didn't even work, if it didn't come up with the administrator password part of it, then you probably have a security group issue or an access control list issue. Go ahead and put the password in, click OK, and we should be connected here shortly to our Windows web server. So it's that easy to connect in. Now, some of you might be saying, well, that's just another administrator username and password that I have to keep track of. Well, once your servers are set up, you're going to change all of that. Your Windows administrators are going to go in here, probably disable this administrator account and maybe join this to an active directory domain, set it up in any way, shape or form they need to. So that way there it is easier for them to log in and administer these servers with existing credentials. So even using identity federation would be a much better option than what I just showed you. But in the beginning, if you have no other way to connect to the server, that is how you would connect to the server.